In order to make PC games work in the living room, Valve had to design an all new controller to make sure people could play a wide variety of PC games. In the development process, the Steam controller was supposed to be a jack of all trades, but in reality, it fails to do anything well. The first thing you'll notice after picking up the Steam controller is just how cheap it feels. The Steam controller is made entirely of plastic except for its rubberized thumbstick. In contrast to the Xbox One controller, the Steam controller feels like a cheap gamepad you buy to play games on your iPad. In the hand, the Steam controller is relatively comfortable after you get over some initial awkwardness. The touchpads are angled upward and you'll strain your thumbs trying to lay them flat. The trick is to use the tip of your thumbs to glide across the touchpads instead. The letter buttons are a little small to my liking and result in some mispresses. The shoulder buttons are extremely stiff, requiring a lot of force to press. The trigger buttons are okay, but I wish there was more resistance. What makes the Steam controller different from any other controller is its dual touchpads. In addition to making the controller look like a surprised owl, the dual touchpads try to emulate using a mouse. Each touchpad has a motor underneath it to provide haptic feedback, and they feel good. One of the problems using a touchpad instead of a thumbstick is finding dead center. My thumbs often wandered off to the side, where a thumbstick would return to center on its own. I found myself hunting for dead center a lot. I played a variety of games with the Steam Controller, and it excelled at none of them. For first and third person games, you use the thumbstick to move and the right touchpad to look around. I found myself swiping frantically to turn around and end up looking at the sky more often than I would like to admit. Tweaking the sensitivity settings helped but I was never as accurate as I was with a keyboard or mouse or even an Xbox controller. The Steam controller fared best with platformers and racing games, but that's unsurprising since you don't need to use the awkward touchpads to play those games. Things aren't all bad with the Steam controller. It works flawlessly with SteamOS and Big Picture Mode. Battery life is also great with an estimated playtime of around 80 hours. I expected the touchpad's haptic motors to impact the battery life, but it doesn't seem to be the case. The controller is truly plug and play and you can remap the buttons any way you want. But the ability to remap it is also one of the biggest flaws, since some games will take a bit of effort to set up. Valve allows you to download community configurations, but they're a hit or miss. I really wanted to like the Steam controller, especially after so many variations and delays. There's undoubtedly a lot of work put into the controller, but I just couldn't enjoy playing games with it. I wanted the Steam controller to feel natural. Instead, it takes a lot of tweaking to feel remotely intuitive. Hopefully the company takes a closer look at the competition and can polish its controller in the future. As it stands, I cannot recommend buying the Steam controller. Save your $50 and buy an Xbox One controller instead. Sure, the Xbox controller won't be able to play every game, but at least it works great with the games the controller supports.